Hi, I'm Hazel from Wisconsin. Please like and subscribe. My older sister Maggie and I lived with our uncle who ran a small ice cream parlor. Ever since I was a kid, I was obsessed with being a superhero. I ran around saving cats from trees or giving free ice cream to poor kids. And I even wore a mask and a cape to look the part. Wow, you're so cool, Hazel. Do you have any superpowers? Oh yeah, I can just sense it when people need my help. Did she tell you that she can fart like a chimpanzee too? No, I don't. Maybe like a rabbit. Whatever, stop embarrassing yourself. You look like a moron. Maggie was two years older, and besides being really pretty, she was also the smartest girl in school. Literally everyone in the town adored her, while I was called the crazy kid with superhero syndrome. Some people really appreciated it, but sometimes it blew up in my face. Like this one time in third grade, I was walking down the street with Maggie when we saw a homeless guy. Here, you look like you need it more than me. And what am I supposed to do with this half-eaten bagel? You must be hungry, right? It's such a tough time to be homeless. The guy looked at me confused before throwing the bagel across the street. I'm not homeless, you freak. I just haven't taken a shower. Maggie laughed like a maniac, and the guy kept screaming at me till I apologized. And the next day, everyone at school was making fun of me for it. Thanks to Maggie, I sometimes thought it was time to stop helping people out. But Uncle always encouraged me to keep going. You have a heart of gold, Hazy. Never lose that. Once when I was in seventh grade, Maggie became the youngest girl ever to win the National Math Olympiad. It was a big deal, and loads of people had gathered at the town center where the mayor was giving her an award. I was almost there when I saw an old truck driver struggling to change a tire. Sir, I can help you with that. Oh, thank you, but I can handle this. I insisted, and he asked me to go get some more tools from the back of his truck. But just as I was getting out, my cape got caught in something, and I tripped, pushing bottles of something on the street, and it smelled like freaking fish sauce. And it was a lot of fish sauce. The smell was unbearable. Within minutes, everyone started running away and the ceremony was over. And boy, was Maggie pissed. Why are you so annoying? You just had to steal my moment, didn't you? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry, nya nya nya. Every freaking time. Maggie didn't talk to me for days. The fishy smell stuck around for a long time and I became the butt of more jokes. You know, I have the perfect name for you. Super stinky. Give it up already, fish sauce. I didn't show it, but those words crushed me. I really thought being heroic was my thing. But I guess at some point it stopped being cute and people thought I was just weird. It was time to be regular, just like everyone else. Years passed and Maggie got busy with her college applications while Uncle tried to save his business. With so many ice cream parlors opening around town, he was facing stiff competition, which seemed to be stressing him out a lot. One time, my uncle got a huge order for a wedding reception, and he looked happy after such a long time. Maggie and I volunteered to help set up the table, and everything was going fine, till suddenly, the fridge stopped working. It'll take the technician an hour to get here. Everything will melt by then. Don't worry, uncle, I got this. Do you even know how to do this? How tough can it be? Besides, uncle needs my help. Now let me work my magic. I repaired the plug within minutes, but just as I put it back in the socket, there was a slight crackle sound before the whole place blacked out. I'd accidentally caused a short circuit, and the technician told us it'll take at least 10 hours to get the system up and running. Kids howling, bride crying, and people yelling. Everything was a mess. We were thrown out immediately, and my uncle didn't even get paid. On our way back, I could feel him fuming in anger. I'd never seen him like this. I'm sorry, Uncle. I just wanted to help. No one needs your help, Hazel. You're 15. Stop ruining things and start putting your energy into something useful. <laughs> you could take out the mask and cape again and work as a superhero impersonator. I hear little nerds hire those at birthday parties now. Shut up. I was super bummed at how my uncle scolded me. So after we got home, I slipped outside to walk around the neighborhood. But soon after, I noticed a tall guy fidgeting with a car. It was dark, so I couldn't see his face. And then the alarms went off. Oh my God, he was a thief. Hey, you, stop. Suddenly, he started running, and before I knew it, I was chasing a thief through the city. We finally stopped in front of a restaurant. That's when I noticed that it was Max, my school senior and a star football player. Oh my God, 
You! Why are you chasing me? Because you were running away. That's because I thought you were some crazy criminal. What? I'm half your size. Why would you think I'm a criminal? Then why were you running after me? Maybe because I thought you were stealing that car. Stealing? That's my car, idiot. And I locked the keys in. Yeah, right. That's what every thief says. Ugh. My mom works at this restaurant, and she has my spare keys. You want to follow me in and verify that, spy girl? I did follow him in, and got super embarrassed to find out he was telling the truth. I ran off feeling like a moron. I had to avoid Max forever now. But the next day at school, he pulled up a chair next to me. What happened to your mask and cape? Excuse me? Oh, that. Yeah, I stopped wearing it a while ago. People thought I looked crazy. Really? I thought it was cool. Apparently, Max was a big fan of comic books. After that day, he started talking to me a lot more, sitting next to me during lunch and walking home from school with me. He was a popular guy and got invited to tons of parties, but he never cared for any of that. He was just a regular guy doing his thing, and I liked that about him. Maybe a little more than I thought. I want to be a comic book illustrator someday, but I don't know if it'll make me any money. I'm so confused. I get it. I just want to help people, but I don't know how yet either. I'll figure it out. Things were good, and finally, I had a friend who didn't think I was weird. And even my uncle looked happier recently. He'd found a rich investor who promised to take his ice cream brand international. He'd even come up with this amazing new ice cream recipe and was excited for us to try it. I was lactose intolerant, but Maggie gobbled up an entire tub. This is amazing, uncle. You're my first customer. I'll be supplying it at your school for the winter dance, too. That's great! Where did you get the recipe? Oh, I just mixed a few flavors and worked my magic. I wish I could taste just a little. No way. You're allergic. What kind of freak is allergic to ice cream? What do you eat when you break up? Oh, wait. You wouldn't know that since you've never dated. Just stick your nose in the ice cream and keep it out of my business. But later that night, I just drifted off to sleep when Maggie shook me awake. I don't feel too well. I feel like I'm gonna... We immediately rushed Maggie to the hospital, and it seems like she had some sort of stomach virus. She needed medicines and lots of rest. I took care of Maggie for the entire week. Even though she recovered in a couple of days, she kept acting like I was her servant. What's this? You call this soup? I'd rather drink cat piss. Oh my god, if I don't die of this tummy ache, I'll definitely die of boredom. Hazel, entertain me. Where's that dumb cape of yours? Act like Superman for me. So annoying. Thankfully, I had Max, and he was a huge help. He'd often come by and help me with homework while Maggie shouted orders like the Queen of Sheba. Don't you get tired of all that howling? You have no idea. Listen, I was wondering if you'd like to go with me to the dance. That is, if you're not going with anyone else, because then it would be awkward, like... Relax, Yappy. I'll go with you. We need to find matching costumes, though. I might have acted cool, but I was dancing inside to have Max as my date. But as always, Maggie had to ruin it for me. You're crazy if you think he's into you. You don't even know him. But I know his kind, and I definitely know you. Guys like Max can only date pretty cool girls. Say what you want, but the truth is that I get to go to the dance with a hot guy while you're stuck in the house. On the day of the dance, I raided Maggie's closet to find her best dress, and I could feel Max's eyes following me the entire time. The dance was great, and Uncle's ice cream stole the show. But the next day, the school was half empty, and Max wasn't picking up my calls either. Apparently, everyone who was at the event had caught a strange stomach virus, and the symptoms matched Maggie's. I went to check up on Max, and he confirmed it. I was fine one moment and started throwing up like crazy the next. Did you eat anything? It was right after the dance. Maybe I had some ice cream, but honestly, I can't remember. And I don't even want to. And that's when it hit me. Could the ice cream be the problem? That was the only common thing in all of this. Maggie got sick right after eating a tub. Why are you looking at me like that? No, no, sorry. I was just thinking about something else. You get well soon, so we can pick up from where we left. And where was that exactly? I kissed him on the cheek, and he blushed red as a tomato. Then I left to talk to my uncle about my suspicions. 
I went to the ice cream parlor, which was open, but Uncle wasn't there. Just then, I heard voices coming from the basement. We need to call this batch back right now. So many kids got sick after eating it. Have you lost your mind? I'm the investor, and I say we go ahead. Calling this back and admitting our fault would destroy our reputation. We're not a little shop anymore. We're going big. Don't ruin it. And you still have to pay for your niece's college, no? Think about that. Uncle looked really stressed as the guy left. And as soon as he saw me, his face turned white. What are you doing here? Did you hear everything? Yes, I did. What kind of evil man are you working with? <sighs> the business was suffering and I needed the money. I knew he was a bit shady, but you girls are growing up and I only wanted you to have a good life. I get that, Uncle, but you have to tell the truth. Even if it means shutting down the shop and losing the money, we'll be just fine. And when we told everything to Maggie, she totally backed me up for a change. Uncle decided to make a public announcement by calling an emergency town meeting. As he began talking, I could see people getting angry. Our kids are suffering because of your stupid ice cream. You should rot in jail. Hey, let the man talk. Yeah, he made a mistake, but now he's here and he's owning up to it, which isn't an easy thing to do. You're angry and we get it, but he deserves to be heard. Uncle beamed at me and continued with his apology. He publicly admitted everything about the bad batches and how he'd called them all back. The investor had vanished into thin air, so Uncle had to pay heavy fines all by himself. And his shop was sealed by the food authorities. I'm sorry about the shop, Uncle, but we did the right thing. You always do the right thing, Hazel, and I'm lucky to have you. You're my hero. A year later, after all charges were cleared, Uncle's business license was returned and we started rebuilding the brand. Max and I were dating and Maggie bagged a scholarship to an Ivy League college. So, you know what you're gonna do next? Yeah, I guess I'll be a politician and help people from a position of power. You sure can talk all day. So yeah, suits you. Just drop the cape and the mask. What are you saying? That's my statement symbol.